Now there's a chance to find some modern day treasure in Scunthorpe next weekend. An art exhibition is opening in the town. The paintings will contain clues to a very special treasure hunt. Anyone can take part and the prize is real gold, I kid you not. Keely Donovan has been on the hunt. It's winter in Scunthorpe, not the most promising place to be looking for treasure. But later this week, people here will have a golden opportunity, quite literally. We've got five golden artefacts that have been created. They're going to be hidden sort of in and around Scunthorpe. But to find them, you'll need to crack a code. Some of them are really difficult. One of them is supposed to be ridiculously easy. Each gold object's worth a thousand pounds. If you find it, you keep it. Simple as that. Confused? Let me explain. It's all in the name of art, and Luke Jerram is the artist behind this slightly crazy scheme. I had this idea to think about sort of celebrating the history of, of Scunthorpe by taking five objects from the museum uh, and created sort of replicas, I suppose, in solid gold. So tell me about the statues themselves. They range from a, a Jurassic Ammonite, which is going to be millions of years old, all the way through to a, a Genus train, uh, which is sort of taken uh, from the, the steel industry. Uh, there's a, a Viking brooch, and then we've also got a, a Roman ram and this beautiful Tudor figurine as well. But finding these £1,000 solid gold objects will not be that easy. Treasure hunters will have to crack a code which is hidden in paintings to be displayed at the 2021 gallery in Scunthorpe. And the paintings are being created at this not-so-secret location here in Bristol. Each artefact has a, a painting that goes with it and the painting contains clues as to where to find this gold artefact. Uh, there are five paintings and, and five objects. Luke has asked artist Vivian Baker to make five paintings. Today he's come to take a look at how things are progressing. Not that surprisingly, all the clues will be in gold. Exciting, it's like Christmas isn't it? Yeah, it looks nice though doesn't it? It's going to be yes, good. Yes, that's quite a good texture. The paintings are like backgrounds, like something solid like stone or metal surfaces. And what exactly are you doing now then? What's this? Um, well, I'm spray painting the clues on. I suppose the big question is, have you cracked any of the clues? No. <laughs> <laughs> Even the easy one? I don't stand a chance then. <laughs> and even Luke doesn't seem sure. There's no way I could, I could crack the most difficult one. I could certainly crack sort of probably two or three of the paintings. You say that now, you know the answer. <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah. I've been working with uh, a, a guy from an unnamed government agency uh, to, to work out um, all the coding and the, and the ciphers for these paintings. You know, some are really easy to decode, whereas the most complicated painting, um, it will take, you know, maybe a month for someone to perhaps work it out. Now, I know you're not giving a lot away. You don't want us to suss out any of these clues just yet. Uh, but can we speak to the man? Um, let me see what I can do. <laughs> so I've managed to persuade Luke to give me the details for his code man. And now I'm heading back up north to meet him. I'm at Sheffield University to meet mathematician and secret code setter Dan Fretwell. How on earth does a mathematician get involved with an art project like this? Well, it's quite a surprise really. Uh, one day there was, a, there was an email go around, the header was just um, puzzler slash code breaker required. <laughs> I just tried to res resist the temptation to open it, but I failed. So how many people know the answers to the codes that you've um, Just me said? and Luke. How difficult are the, the ciphers that you've set within them? Yeah, so, so some of them are really difficult. Um, so there's five in total, and uh, one of them's supposed to be ridiculously easy. The final two in particular are much harder, so we're, we're expecting at least one of them might go unsolved for quite a while. To give me a fighting chance, Dan shows me how to solve a relatively easy puzzle. So what I've used here is something called a Caesar shift. It's a very old cipher, and basically all I've done is I've took the alphabet and shifted it on one place. Okay, so 
That would be an I. Yep. Okay. Ah, uh, I know what you've done here. There you go. I know what you've done. Very clever. <laughs> <laughs> And does this one follow a similar rule? This one follows a bit of an extended rule from that one. So can you try and figure that one out for me? OK, so that is a jump forward. That stays the same. That's a jump forward. That stays the same. That's a jump forward. That stays the same. Oh, it's, it's the same message. It's the same message. OK. Well done. You, you, okay, you, yeah. you've, uh, that was easy than I thought it was. See. Well, I don't think they'll be recruiting me for MI5 anytime soon. We took the file, we printed it and now we need to put a, what we call a sprue, which is a feeder, in order to put it in the mould. Meanwhile, at a secret location elsewhere in the country, some very talented people are working to finish the gold objects ready for them to be hidden in five locations around Scunthorpe. Originally, it's a Viking brooch that was found by a metal detectorist. And um, I suppose I really like the shape of it. It reminds me of all the, all the wind turbines there are around Scunthorpe. This is called Lost Wax Casting. We're putting the wax into the mould. We're going to melt the wax out of the mould. And then through that tube, we will feed the metal to make the, the piece. Oh, look at that, it's boiling. Right, ready to go, and we'll roll it over. There is this lovely moment of alchemy where you're holding precious metal, a gold, and you're melting it down, and it's being transformed into another another form. It's something quite magical about that. It's quite hard to describe. We've gone from 3D object to scanning to wax into plaster and now we're in 18 karat gold. There we go. Look at that. Solid gold. So that's worth, a, you know, a thousand pounds. It's quite something, isn't it? I wonder who's going to find it. Well, not me at this rate. So I'm off to meet the man whose job it is to organise the exhibition. Maybe he can give me some clues. So we're in Scunthorpe Centre. Yeah. Are we close to where any of the figures are going to be hidden? Well, I'm not sure I could possibly say, <laughs> but there are some in, in kind of urban, urban locations, others in parkland, some a bit further out of town. So ah, a real right. mix. So spread out then. Yeah. And are you worried that people are going to go out and dig up all the parks? Yeah, it was a bit of a concern, so we were really careful not to bury any of the objects. People won't need to dig anything up. They're going to be right under people's noses. And it will be difficult to hide them, won't it? It will. We've been discussing this. Should we go in disguise? Should we go in <laughs> balaclavas in the middle of the night, like the SAS or Banksy? Um, <laughs> we're really not sure. It's a whole new kind of street art. You might have to shave your beard off. Yeah, absolutely. Your new yeah, wear a different hat. So if someone finds the object, they get to keep it. And they'll then decide whether to, to sort of melt it down and turn it into hard cash, or they can keep the artifact um, for artistic reasons. So, you know, that's kind of interesting as well for me, you know, what the value of an object is. Is it just the value of the gold, or does it have more value as an artifact, as an artwork in its own right? So Dominic and Luke are going to hide the objects under the cover of darkness. And you've guessed it, they won't let me go with them. The exhibition starts here in Scunthorpe at the weekend. So get yourself there and happy hunting. <laughs>